Okay, let us pray, Heavenly Father. On the first day of the week, we are here together in the name of Lord Jesus Christ to worship Father God and to hear your words, Lord. Uh, give us spirit of wisdom and uh, revelation and open our eyes of understanding so that we may be able to understand your words that are spiritual, Lord, that we cannot see. We cannot see with our physical eyes, but let us be able to understand your words through the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Okay, before we hear sermon, uh, let me read the book of Psalms, chapter 32, uh, verse 1 through 11. Blessed is who whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputes not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer, Shella. I acknowledge it my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not heed, I said. I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin, Shella. For this shall every one that is godly Pray unto thee in a time when thou mayst be found surely in the floods of great waters, they shall not come nigh unto him. Thou art my hiding place, thou shalt preserve me from trouble, and thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance, Isella. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go, I will guide thee with mine eye. Be you not as the horse, or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held, and with a bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusts in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, all you that are upright in heart. Amen. Okay, our main scripture related to sermon today is Book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 1 through 23. Now today's message is very spiritual, okay? So unless you pray to the Lord to give you understanding, impossible to understand the spiritual, the principle of the words. That means, you know, if you're saved, what kind of things already fulfilled in you spiritually, even though you cannot feel, even though you cannot see. The words of God is, you know, truth. It's mysterious things, you know. When you believe it, then you can feel, all right? Unless you believe the words of God, no way. Never you going to feel the words of God. Okay, it is the words of God is totally different from you know words of man. Yeah, let me read. Okay, uh, book of Romans chapter one, uh, chapter six. You know, verse one through twenty-three. Very long passages. Hear very carefully. Okay. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that the grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we, that are dead to sin, live any longer therein? Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into 
Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should work in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing death, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead from the dead dies no more. Death has no more dominion, dominion of him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he lived, he lived unto God. By counting the old life to be dead, and by yielding the new life to God. Likewise, reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it and the lust thereof. Neither yield you your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall he sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace? No, God forbid. Know you not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto unrighteousness. But God, be thanks, and you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart the form of a doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the matter of man because of the inform informity of your flesh. For as you have yielded your members, servants, to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants, to righteousness unto holiness. For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness, what fruit have you done in those things whereof you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your truth, your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the ways of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. How much you understand what I have read for you? I bless all of you to understand, you know, when I preach and teach, you know, 
words that we've got today. As you see, today's, you know, our subject, theme is yield your members, your member with your body, okay? Your members, servants of righteousness unto holiness. That means if you do not sin, it's a weight unto holiness. If you sin, it's unto iniquity, all right? The God is righteous one that observe the law that he made himself to execute judgment. Of course, he is love so that he execute judgment. The Lord God made the Garden of Eden and um, made man to dwell therein so that he wanted the power of subdue. Subdue means uh, rule all things that were made by him. The Lord God wanted to be glorified by man for him to hearken to his word, listen to his word, right? Using his free will given by him instead of hearkening the devil. Yeah, they could obey God or they could obey Satan. Yeah, you also have free will, right? Either way, right? When you Follow the words of God. He's glorified. If you don't obey the words of God, you know, Satan is glorified. It's very important, okay? Either one. God has made the plan before the foundation of the earth. That means before he created the earth, he just planned to cast out the devil that sinned in the beginning, long time ago in heaven. And also, the reason he sent the only begotten son, Jesus Christ, is to destroy, destroy the devil. Yeah, you shall understand what I mean. The Lord God must have known of the devil that visited the first man to tempt him. Yeah, long time ago, devil sinned against God. When God made it, God of Eden and made a man, God knew, you know, the devil must be going to visit the earth, you know, to have Adam and Eve sin to obey him. God knew that. He's omniscient. God knows everything. And the first man that was created was a living soul. It was before Jesus Christ that is quickening spirit. Jesus Christ is a quickening spirit, life-giving spirit. But we are living soul. In the first man, there was no Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, that quickens the dead, spirit of man. God made Apostle Paul testify of his mysterious plan through the Holy Ghost. It is the plan of God that was set before he made the foundation of the world. Before the foundation of the world means before he created the earth, as I told you before, and before he made all things in the earth, even before he made the first man in the Garden of Eden, God predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself God, according to the good pleasure of his will. Yes, God planned to make us his children. God's children, see, according to his pleasure. And through although such a mysterious plan of God, he allowed the devil to tempt the first man for the time being, and he also allowed the first man to hear, to listen, hearken the devil instead of God to destroy the devil from heaven and earth. The thought of man cannot understand the thought of God at all, as God tried the job a long time ago, right? Almost 4,000 years ago. God tried the job using the Satan, devil, for the several days. He also wanted to try man for the time being at 6,000 years. That is, as six days before God. Finally, he may choose them, the believe in Jesus Christ, to receive the glory for, forever from them. Of this, Apostle Paul testified unto saints of Ephesians. 
to the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He has made us accepted in the beloved. Yeah, the reason He saved us is to, you know, praise Him forever. Right, because we are saved. We are supposed to go down to pit, you know, hell, but we saved, you know, through the death of Jesus Christ. God became a man died for us, you know that? If you really understand that grace, you know, no complaint, no worry and concern. Only thing we have to do is praise the Lord because He saved us. The Holy Ghost made the Apostle Paul testify of the righteousness and life that is to given to given through the Lord Jesus Christ. It is of restoring sinners completely. He said. Nevertheless, that reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after similitude of Adam's transgression. We were never eaten, you know, or within tree, right? Yeah, but still, the death, we live under death, our flesh, right? Who is a figure of him? Adam is a figure of him. That means uh, Adam is the model, sample of him that was to come. Jesus Christ, but not as the offense, so also is a free gift. For if through the offense of one may be, may be dead. Yeah, because Adam, we are dead, right? We are dying. Much more the grace of God, the gift of grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. A one man disobeyed God, all became sinner. Now, one man, Jesus Christ, you know, died for us. We, when we believe in him, we became one. Righteous. It's a grace. It's fair, right? God is righteous. And not as it was by one that sinned, the soul is the gift, who the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense, that reigned by one, by one, Adam. Because Adam, we have to die. Much more they that receive abundance of grace and of gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one who? Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men, yeah, because of Adam, to condemnation, even so, by the righteousness of one, Jesus Christ, the free gift came unto all men, unto justification of life, whosoever believe in him. For as by one man's disobedience, Adam's, right? Many were made sinners. So by the Obedience of one, obedience of Jesus Christ, one man, shall many be made righteous, just like us. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. The reason God gave law is, you know, to make us sinners, more sinners. Without law, no sin, right? The law isn't given through Moses, that's why. Because of that, all men became sinners. That as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. How much you understand that? You know, if you don't understand that, I encourage you to read the sermon, speaking, uh, written in English, on the bulletin, read and read and read and pray, okay? God made the Apostle Paul testify of the righteousness and love and grace of God. The will of God was to have the devil, the sin in the beginning, appear in the earth to bring forth the sin to the first man, Adam, that was made by the hands of God. Finally, God planned to cast the devil onto the lake of fire forever, judging him sin, his sin. On the other hand, to overdo, execute, to execute the righteousness of God to destroy the devil. God had to put all men for 400 years, that is only four days 
and the sin and death and curse. But finally, God executed righteousness once again through Jesus Christ to proceed to execute his righteousness. God declared against the devil in the Garden of Eden of the judgment against the devil 6,000 years ago, he said, to sovereign devil. The Lord God said unto the sovereign, because thou hast done this, that means you brought the sin to the earth, to Adam, let him sin, right? You have done this. Thou art, you are cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed, he shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his feet. What that means? Lord God spoke of Israel as the woman to be chosen as his wife, spiritual wife, as well as Jesus Christ that shall appear as a seed of Abraham, that is the forefather of Israel, saying unto the serpent, because you has done this. God declared the law of righteousness of God. He also for, foretold the relationship of enmity between the devil and Israel. As God said, the human history has been continued to persecute Israel by the devil using his principalities and power. Any nation, right? Even Hitler, right? Babylon, Assyria, Greece, Roman Empire. The Lord God also foretold the bruising, the hand and the feet of Christ Jesus by devil, as well as the judgment of the devil that has the power of sin and death through the death and resurrection of Christ. This word of God appeared in the book of Genesis, was the gospel of Christ declared for the first time time unto the world. Apostle Paul testified of the gospel of Christ as the power of God unto salvation for them to believe. He also said this gospel of Christ for the Jew first and the Greek, that is Gentiles. Whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, the bruised, the head of the serpent, the devil is to receive the righteousness and life through the righteousness of God. So the main passage given unto us today, we should understand the very important truth that we have to know and to do. For we are saved through the righteousness and love of God in the Lord Jesus Christ. We have been delivered from sin and death and curse to be free in heaven, not in hell. The very important thing that we have to understand is no more to dwell in the midst of sin, not to be able to dwell in sins. To much more stronger word than the world must not sin. If we understand the grace that we have received, we are not to be able to sin. What that means? Because we are already dead of sin. In other words, even though our body is alive physically, but spiritually dead already. In other words, our body were, was dead in the body of Christ, Jesus Christ, spiritually, 2,000 years ago, as if we are dead in the grave. Once we understand this truth, we cannot sin anymore. To be spiritual is to be compared to be physically, that is to be seen by our physical eyes. Whosoever has the Holy Ghost that dwells within should not see all things physically anymore, but has to be able to see all things through the words of God inspired by the Spirit of God. Apostle Paul testified over this. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Yeah, you have been 
taught the spirit of the world, right? In school. But here, we learn, okay? We study the spirit of God that is in the words of God. That is truth. But the spirit of the world is not truth. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with the spiritual, but the natural man, that means the man with the Holy Spirit, not saved man, receive not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And we are not able to sin anymore spiritually because we are not dwelling in the world spiritually, even living physically in the world. But in other place, Apostle Paul also testified of the reason of this. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is free from sin. Old man, what is the old man? The man with the DNA of Adam, right? No more. He's dead on the cross with Christ Jesus. Yeah, God made them that believe in the salvation through Jesus Christ, be baptized into the body of Christ spiritually 2,000 years ago. And the church of God is a holy place where the members of Christ gather together. Before the foundation of the world, God predestinated many people that believe in him to be the brothers of Jesus Christ as well as his bride and friends also. And therefore, God wants to save all men, all men, because all men, you know, created in the image of God a long time ago. But he also wants to have them come unto the knowledge of the truth, spiritual thing. In other words, we want them, he wants them to know all the truth fulfilled in them, even though we are saved, we cannot have as the children, live as the children of God. Therefore, the children of God has to search the words of God, study words of God, spiritual words of God in depth to understand the truth. As you study hard in school, right? To study the wisdom of the world, the spirit of the world. We have to more study to know the Spirit of God in the church. How much you spend your time to understand the words of God, comparing the time you devote yourself to the world. Very serious problem. When we understand the truth, we are not to be bonded by anyone, anything, but to be free to deny ourselves take up our cross to follow the Lord Jesus as his disciples. Therefore, whosoever understands the truth of salvation has to live reckoning himself indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Then such a spiritual man never allows sins prevail in him, not to follow the lust but obey the words of God, being led by the Spirit, he never give up his body unto sins to be instrument of unrighteousness, but yield his body that became the new creature, quickened from the dead unto God, to be used as the instrument of righteousness. He that yields his body as the instrument of righteousness unto God is able to be unto holiness, 
They can have a holy life. No more be unto unrighteousness, yielding his body as the servants to uncleanness and to iniquity and to iniquity. Apostle Paul testified of the holiness that all the saints, saved people, should observe. And that you put on the new man, new man is Jesus Christ. Old man is Adam. Yeah, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. He also said, to the end, he may establish your heart unblameable in holiness before God. Even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. For this is the will of God. Even our sanctification that you should obtain from fornication, abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as he also have forewarned you and testified. For God has not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Yes, the reason, by his grace, through his death and resurrection, through his blood, you are sanctified. That means what? You have to keep sanctification, holiness, until he come. If not, you shall see him in shameful way. If you yield you know, your body unto righteousness, then you can be unto holiness. You shall be praised by the Lord Jesus Christ when he come back. I bless all of you. Understand his will. All right? And try to understand the words of God. The world passed by. The lost of the world passed by too. Don't stick on the world too much, okay? It's all disappearing. The Bible says, whether you believe or not, you shall see. It shall be done as God said. Heavenly Father, not by might, not by power, only by the Spirit of God, they can understand your will, your words, Lord. I cannot do anything, Lord. Open their eyes of understanding, giving their wisdom understanding, so that they may see the kingdom of God, not the world, wicked world anymore. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, amen.